Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Um, <clears throat> two in a row. Whoa, am I back to I'm back to, to doing videos all the time? I don't know. Um, I just it's it's Wednesday. Uh, Marvel Comics are out. Uh, DC, of course, coming out yesterday. But I was perusing the new comics, and um, I, I'm I'm not really gonna jump on X Men yet. Uh, I don't know if I want to. Um, I'm gonna wait till this new X thing comes out with the new Uncanny and X Force and whatnot. I know lots of people have been talking talking shit about it, um, but uh, you know I don't. I, I gotta give it a yeah. You know, like everything, I gotta make my decision for myself. I'm not listening to other idiots, you know, on the internet go off about something. You know, no, no. Uh, no offense to the idiots on the internet. I am one of the idiots on the internet. So, um, and again, I, I encourage you not to take everything that I say seriously and make up your decision for yourself. I'm just going to give you my opinion. Um, you know, and my opinion shouldn't supersede your own uh, ability to make decisions for yourself. Um, I just want to put that out there. So anyways, the X-Men came out. And I'm flipping through the, the issue. I haven't read it yet. I was flipping through it. Um, and, yeah, the whole Krakoa thing, you know, and the whole, you know, Mutant Gala, whatever it is, the the Hellfire Gala, all that stuff, I do find that to be dumb. Um, you know, I just find it, uh, it's, to me, it's not, doesn't have enough stuff that a young boy would like in it and I guess that's kind of the problem with a lot of things there's nothing seems to be made today for a young boy or a 50 year old boy that you know has the mind of a 12 year old like myself um, and uh, you know so it's kind of weird um, today with comics however Regardless of the story decisions and the things that happen in the modern comics, you know, don't worry about the woke crap. Don't worry about whatever, you know, the, the bad storytelling. Just put aside, just, just their events that happen, right? And I would chalk them up. To, for me, like I said, comics, my first love, of course, is going to be the art. Um, and, you know, I look at the art first, the story second. I know the story became like the thing in like the 2000s, you know, in the 90s it was all about the visuals and the flash and the art, but, you know, I still look at the art first. That's not to say that I'm like, oh, you know, I loved everything from the past either. Like again, and I'm going to get into to the person here is, I've never been a huge Jim Lee fan. Uh, I, I don't like Rod Blyfield. I'm not saying, you know, Captain America chest, you know, whatever. I just don't like Rod Blyfield. Um, and I don't, I don't really like Jim Lee. I don't really like Todd McFarlane's art. I don't like all those image guys' art, for the most part. With the exception, with the exception of Mark Silvestri, who I loved on X-Men, but when he got to image, I did not like Cyberforce. I didn't like a lot of the stuff in Cyberforce, but I really like Mark Sylvester on the X-Men, and that still to today is my favorite artist on the X-Men. So the point of this video is, I'm sorry, you know, I've been rambling and not getting to the point, but my point is, um, if you were to compare a, the, the current issue of the X-Men, I know it's not Uncanny X-Men, it's X-Men, but let's just compare X-Men to some uncanny issues of the past and I'll give you this is what I, I want to point out because I noticed something um, I mean I noticed a lot of things looking at the artwork in this new one and not even reading the story yet you know I said the story is irrelevant if things happen in the story that you don't like right you kind of have to get over it because I'm gonna make I'm gonna show some things that happened in, in the uncanny X-Men back in the heyday when I was in high school in the late 80s and things happened in the comic that I didn't like and I was furious you know as much as a high school teenager you know go with raging hormones and you know in a mindful of angst you know misanthropic angst for the world uh, 
you know, what there's a lot of things that happen. I just like today, I was in uproar. I was shaking my head, you know, my hand at the clouds, you know, yelling to the, to the, you know, yelling all the way to uh, the editors at Marvel. You know, what did you do? Um, so, I'm no stranger to things happening in comic books that I don't like. Um, but guess what? I got over it, and I learned to enjoy it, and things you know just when i thought you know i was everything was peachy clean and every and i'm going to show you what's going on what my example everything's peachy clean then boom i get hit with another brick and then another brick and uh, but all the way through i love the artwork for the most like i said i'm not a huge fan of jim lee but i don't dislike him but i like sylvester better you know and then uh so I'm just going to give you an example. I'm also going to pull up the CBR of um, of the current X-Men comic just to kind of show you. I just want to show you a comparison with art um, to show you that, you know, the artwork back in the day, as much as I loved even the Sylvester stuff, it wasn't, you know, it, it didn't look like the artwork today. Artwork today, you're on two camps. You like it or you don't like it. There's really no in-between. Um, if you if you like the old style of comic books with the old style color and the old style of way they used to do things, then that's fine. I personally like that style. I'm starting to warm up. I'm starting to get over it, and and like the new artwork. Right? As far the style, not the artwork specific. I think the artwork is amazing. I'm talking about the actual process of how the pages are made and how the color is done. Yada yada yada. So. Or you either don't like the old stuff and you think it looks antiquated and old and dated and you like the new stuff. Now remember, there was a time in the 80s when when people like McFarlane came out and Arthur Adams, you know, and, and all these guys that, you know, were like, oh my gosh, these guys are amazing. It was very hard for me to go back and look at like Jack Kirby art um, because I thought it looked dated and antiquated. And it wasn't until I became older and more mature and understood the craft of making comic books and the craft of, of you know, composition, that I could start to appreciate the Kirby stuff because I hated Kirby stuff back in the eighties. Couldn't stand it. Um, you know, anything that looked old, I hated. Now that I'm old, <laughs> I like old things, um, and I can appreciate old things. I, you know, do I like? Do I still like like the McFarlands in the? Uh, you know, what McFarlane did with Amazing Spider-Man, Arthur Adams with his work on the X-Men. Yes, I still like it. Do I like it better than the Kirby? I don't, you know, or even say like uh, John Byrne stuff or Cockrum stuff or Paul Smith. I like it all better than John Romita Jr. Let's just put that. <laughs> um, but let's, let's flip over and let's look at these. So the first thing I want to bring up is... Um, so I'll put myself over there in the corner there. The first thing I want to bring up is, and again, I picked some key issues that I want to tell you about things that happened that I was, had, you know, was heartbroken. You know, it, they murdered my teenage years. <laughs> and I murdered, murdered, I guess it is still your childhood, you know. I thought they, you know, in my childhood, I thought they murdered my childhood. Um, but, uh, you know, regardless of the cover, cover aside, but just look at that artwork, right? I don't care what anybody says about modern artwork. I don't care that the fact that all of these artists are from different countries where they can pay people half the salary. You know, I look at the artwork. This is good artwork. This is really, really good. Trick, take it, take it from somebody who does comic book artwork. This stuff blows mine out of the water. The stuff is great, um, and people who say, you know, oh, the artwork in the was much better than in the uh, back in the day. It, it it it's a you're not comparing apples to apples, and b it's all subjective. Uh, but the objectiveness of modern artwork is, regardless if you like it or you hate it, it's still good artwork. Um, I mean, look at that. Look at the there's action there. Look at the lighting effects. I mean, all this stuff, of course, because you know, can be done. I mean, look at the effects in this panel here with this creature versus Foosh, right? 
um, look at the effect of that, right? Then look at this X-Men comic, 247. Obviously, they couldn't do that stuff then. And they were very close to it, but they couldn't do it then. Um, you know, but they can do it now. You know, I mean, this stuff looks great. Look at this shot of... I brought this up because of what's-her-face... Um, I can't, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Is the X-23 girl. Um, look at like this type of shot, right? This is totally something you would see out of a Jim Lee comic, right? And, you know, that's a great panel. She's slashing the thing. You know, there's a great page coming up with the, the explosion that I thought, yeah, this one here with the silhouetting, and you've got Miss Marvel here with their arms, you know, all elongated, and you got Modoc flying up here. That looks amazing. Um, and trust me, I, I know my comic book artwork, <laughs> and I can truly say, it, I know it's subjective, but I think it's amazing. But what, like I said, what is objective is the fact is it is good artwork, regardless of you like it or not. Um, is it your favorite? Yeah, like again, that's subjective. It's not my favorite either, but I think it's really damn good. Look at that. Great action. You know, great, you know, the power stuff. I mean, back in the day, everything was shorthand for how you did powers. Um, but nowadays, this is a little, this is, the force perspective in this is a little wonky, but not too bad. Trust me, there's been a lot worse back in the day. So, here's what I want to talk about with this one. First, let's look at some of the Sylvester art. Now, look at that Ninja Turtles for the NES. Um, this comic book came out, I've, I've told the story before, this comic book came out when I was in high school. Um, and it came out while I was working at one of my first jobs at a and w and I was sitting, I just got picked up this comic off the spinner rack at Fireside Books, and I was dropped off. I, I didn't have a license at the time. I got dropped off at A&W to work my shift, and I'm sitting there in the back break room reading this comic before I, you know, before my shift started. I think I was eating my chicken sandwich and curly fries, too, as well, having lunch. Um, and... Uh, you know, and then this comic came out, and I was like, oh, you know, it's, I, and like I said, I, I, even though she hulks my favorite character, I had a, a teenage, I still do, I had a teenage massive crush on Rogue. I loved Rogue. Um, and here she is, you know, here she is in, in here. She's wearing Danvers Warbird costume, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought that was cool then. Still think it's cool now, you know. And here's this. Um, it's not Master Mold. Oh, I can't remember what the name of it. Was it Master Mold? I can't remember what the name of this uh, Sentinel was. But anyways, so here's one thing. First thing off the bat is what happened to Psylocke, right? When she became Ninja Psylocke. Granted, I think Ninja Psylocke's pretty hot in her skimpy outfit. However, they changed something, and I did, and I wasn't happy about it. I liked Psylocke the way she was. Right, um, and then you know they're fighting this thing, blah blah blah. I mean, this is some great artwork. I mean, this is Sylvester. I think Sylvester is much better than Jim Lee, but you know, with this, with the, let's talk about the uh, similar things here with the uh, you know use of uh, silhouettes. Um, it looks great, see, but see how much. I mean, imagine that they could have done all the clouds and all this. Well, I think it's water and smoke. I think kicking up they could have you know blended in him with the background to make this like haze they could have done a lot of that stuff back then um but obviously you know they went with what they had at the time uh, and it's still great and again this stuff if you're on the camp that the new stuff is better right it's also objectively true that this old artwork was amazing um whether it's your favorite or you think it's awesome again is subjective to you but hands down both of these comics this is 2024 this is two thousand or sorry this is 1989 i believe 89 or 88 one of the, i think it's 89 um you can't argue that this is uh this is an awesome so again now you know i'm reading this comic everything's hunky dory i'm digging all the action everything's neat and then oops sorry what happens happens um, sorry, I was just looking. There's an Arthur Adams Wolverine. Where is what's her face? Uh, 
I mean, Adams is good. I, I don't really like Adams' later stuff. I equate Ad Arthur Adams almost to kind of like uh, a Getty Lee's voice. <laughs> I feel like it's uh, it hasn't aged well. Um, but, so I'm reading this comic, and then, like I said, what happens at the end of this comic? We all know. And it's spoiler alert if you don't know. Um, Rogue ends up getting sucked into the Siege Perilous. And you think... Sorry, was that the... Where's the last panel? Yeah, there she goes. So she gets sucked into the Siege Perilous, right? And she's gone. Heartbroken. Teenage me was heartbroken, right? It's like, don't tell me she's dead. Completely dead, right? So, again, things happening in comic books, and there's, this is just one incident, happened all the time back then that I did not want to happen, and I was furious, and I was angry, and I was like, you know, screw comics, I'm never reading one ever again. And, uh, and there you go, right? So when things happen in this newer, these newer comics, I know it seems like there seems... They seem to be marketing, like obviously with this one, they're marketing it to teenage boys, right? These the newer stuff. I don't know about this issue specifically, but they, I'm not, I don't know who they're marketing it towards, but they're, they're definitely teenage boys are not their uh, ideal customer that they have in mind. They would like a younger crowd to be interested in it, right? So. Um, they seem like they're, you know, they're still trying to go for that market, but I don't think they're doing it very well. Um, I know the market that they don't want for this new comics is people like me. They don't want middle-aged dudes, uh, which are pretty much, as I'm making the station channel, is the majority, I would say the vast majority of comic book uh purchasers, buyers, readers, whatever you want to, collectors, just fans of comic books today, of comic books, not the MCU, not this, not animated series, but comic books, right? The primary people that like comic books are middle-aged dudes, the ones that were in high school when this issue of X-Men, where Rogue gets sucked through the Paris Siege Perilous happened. Those are the people who are buying comics. It doesn't seem like Marvel wants, or DC, wants us to be the prime. They want to somehow shift away from us. So they might be trying to actively aggravate us by doing things that we don't like in the comic. Um, and But the thing is, I think, who are they targeting it towards? Are they targeting it towards, when they say young people, young who? Young, young adults? Young teenagers? Really young, you know, adolescents, tweens, boys, girls, or in between, you know, who are they marketing this stuff towards? Um, the thing is, us old guys, us old farts, we've been around the block a few times, right? As much as they try to make comics that don't appeal to us, we've gone through this roller coaster with comic books for a very long time. I said, I've pretty much been reading comic books since 1984 and prior to that into the late 70s I was buying a lot of you know the uh, licensed books like Micronauts, Star Wars, uh, stuff like that. So Ron, so with the uh, I've been around a, the block a few times and most of the people in my camp have been around the block a few times and we've had our ups and downs and here I'm going to show you again ups and downs. So, so Rogue's gone, right? Now look what happens. I love this I love this cover. Um, Rogue comes back. Look, she rematerializes. She comes back through. She's naked, but she comes back through. This is Jim Lee art too. And this is, of course, this is the infamous issue where she goes to uh, the Savage Lands and you get the Savage Lands. Um, what do you call it? But again, this stuff is catering to teenage boys. And I was, you know, I was almost out of high school by the time this, this comic came out. Um, and so again, they knew their market. And then of course, you know, here's the classic scene with Rogue, you know, the Savage Lands Rogue, right? Obviously they're targeting teenage boys. 
they don't seem to be targeting teenage <coughs> boys as much in the new stuff. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. I guess if you're, uh, me personally, I like the, you know, because I'm of the mind of a, of a 12 year old boy, so I, I like this stuff for a 13, 14 year old boy. Um, you know, and I don't see it as much, although I, I do think some of the the sexiness is coming back, and I've seen it in a few comics. Um, it's it's done in like a weird kind of, you know, European art style, um, but it's still, it definitely is coming back. Um, but again, I mean, look at the artwork, right? And this is great artwork. This is also, also very good artwork. Um, but again, so Rogue comes back, right? And I'm happy. I'm like, hey, you know, the, the, the I can turn the fun switch back on, or the happy switch back on. Rogue's back. Uh, I have nothing to worry about. And then this, this whole Magneto thing happens, right? And I gotta say, I've never been a huge Magneto fan, but when this, I, I pulled this in, but when this, the whole Rogue Magneto thing happened, I was a little miffed. <laughs> I didn't like this. Um, and again, this is, I believe this is before uh, Gambit, which is, again, another character that I didn't like and the whole romance. I, I wanted Rogue, when I was a kid, I, you know, as a teenager, I wanted Rogue for myself. I, sorry, I take it back. It, this goes to the, somebody came up with a, uh, there was an exp a psychological experiment somebody did where they gave, they said, here, here's $10. You can keep two dollars, but you have to give eight dollars to another person, right? Or you neither one of you no, gets any money at all, right? And they said that like eighty percent of the people show they're so worried about what the other person gets, right? That they would rather go with nothing uh, than let the other person have anything, right? I gotta say, in this case, I'm right on that board. I would rather Rogue be with nobody than not be with me. <laughs> you know, obviously, it's impossible. But I mean, I don't want to share her with any with Magneto or Gambit, especially Gambit. Magneto, it, it didn't last very long, but whatever it is. But uh, at least he's a m middle-aged guy like me. At least you know he got a little Rogue. But anyways, um, what's what's her face? Um, or what's his face? Gambit. Oh, I just do not like Gambit. Do not like he was, he's like the epitome of the type of dude I do not like. Um, and you know, so that happens in this. I also brought up this comic just because it has a lot of like Wolverine, and it has a you know it's Jim Lee art. It's got a lot of ninjas and Wolverine and stuff like that. And then you get you know, there's Logan here. You know, you got ninjas again. You got peeps you got it's jubilee but at the same time you know jubilee of course is the new de facto kitty pride but at the end of this comic um they're in japan and then of course uh there's kitty ninja kitty and uh, and here comes wolverine look at the art right again you cannot say that the artwork is the problem here yeah, that's that's amazing. It's amazing artwork. Great. Um, and again, I am I, I like this better than this because I'm not a huge Jim Lee fan. I would much prefer much prefer the artwork in this comic to this Jim Lee comic by far. Um, now, granted, would I like other things to happen in the comic? Um, sure. You know, I like I like her. I you know a lot of people they you know, oh they made Wolverine a girl. Well, no, they didn't. Wolverine's still Wolverine. Obviously, he's in the book. It's just she's X twenty three, right? And she's got the similar costume, right? I think that's fine. I like her. I th I like her a lot. Laura Kinney is that her name? Yeah, Laura Kinney. Sorry, just popped in my head. Um, is or is Laura Kinney somebody else? No, Laura Kinney, right? Okay. Um, it's not the best Wolverine drawing there. But I like the background, though, with the, you know, the whole Japan dealio there. It looks pretty cool. Neon Japan. Very, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Black Rain <laughs> with, uh, with Michael Douglas. Um, but, uh, no, I, I, I much prefer this artwork to this artwork. The, I mean, the only, the only, my only trade-off would be 
is give uh, give Kenny here a little bit more curve, and, you know, and maybe a few more, you know, maybe a few more tail end shots like you get in here, right? But uh, but that's that's about that's it's all my own, my own that's all I ask is just you know maybe make the girls a little sexier, maybe show a little more skin, don't wrap them up in these giant leather clad outfits that are head to toe, you know. But she's still curvy. She still suits pretty tight. Like I said, that's personal subjective opinion, although I think a lot of people probably share that same opinion. But again, that's that we would be catering to 12-year-old boys and 50-year-old men if that was the case. So it doesn't seem like they want to do that, even though they know it's so. They're not stupid. I mean, these people, you know, these people that run... Everybody thinks that everybody's a moron at, at these places. They're not dumb. They know what... A lot of people want. They just don't want to give those people what they want because they want. They don't want those people to be their fan base. They want a different fan base. And if that's their ploy, that's fine. It's their company. They can choose whatever they want. But I think it's just detrimental. It's a mistake. Um, just because, you know, I think that, you know, alienating your majority of your fans or the people who basically love this stuff in the first place. For the sake of going after a fan base that may not be there and probably isn't there, I think is a bad idea. Um, and you know, we shall see how things pan out. I, like I said, I, I I've been digging the Marvel comic books lately. You know, I don't think they're amazing. And here's the other thing: this story here, right? It's Claremont's story. It's got Jim Lee artwork. Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, you got Scott Williams, inking. Uh, you know, you got the, the team. I think is what's her face on there? Yeah, Glynis is on there doing the art or doing the color. Um, you got good old Tom doing the lettering. Bob Harris, editor, you know, editor in chief, uh, Tom DeFalco. But you've got the dream team there, right? You know, these people, I don't know, let's go back to the credits, I don't even know who's doing anything. Like I said, it just seems like there's an, all these artists are really good, but I can't, they all draw similar, but obviously they all, you know, obviously everybody tried to copy Jim Lee in the past, but I just don't know who's who really, and, uh, okay, Jerry Duggan, I think he's been writing it the whole time, hasn't he? Um, and then you got this Kassara, Joshua Kassara, I think I've heard the name before. Um, I don't. He might. He might not even be European. He might even be American. I'm not sure. We'll have to check that out. Uh, I'm not gonna check it out here. But you know, you guys can correct me in the in the comments and tell me the full story. But regardless, it just seems like a lot of the artists. They seem like they're all from Spain and Italy. And again, I'm assuming it's because they can get them work for cheap. Not to say they're not good artists, because they're great artists. But they're definitely working for less than what you know what they can pay somebody in America. Okay, that's just good business, I get. Well, I mean, that's good business, but what does it do to the United States? It's kind of what the pro one of the problems we're in, we're into right now. Um, but uh, yeah. So you either like, I mean, like I said, back to the story. Did I like this story here? This 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 story in this X Men two sixty eight. That's okay. It's kind of meh. Did the artwork at the time? Did I like the artwork? I liked it, but I liked Sylvester better. Um, a lot of things. And then uh, you look at uh, this comic, right? Is the story? I haven't read this one in particular, but is the story great? I don't know. It's probably just like this one. It's a little meh. Uh, is the artwork great? Yeah, the artwork's great. Do I like the artwork better in this than in this? If you got meh story, meh story, you know, and you got better artwork, I guess my vote, if I was going to bet on one of these two horses, it's going to be the one on the left here. It's going to be the newer comic, right? Outside, outside of uh, Black Widow's gray suit there, which is really, really compelling. <laughs> um, and like I said, I like a little more of that compelling, that, that, that whatever. I would like a little bit more of that in my newer comics. And... I have looked at the new... I haven't got it in the mail yet, but I have looked at the new... Um, it might be out there now in the mailbox. I did get the new uh, 
or looked at the new Spider Woman, and that artwork's really amazing. I should pull that up, but I'm gonna save that for the review on that comic. But um, yeah, he there there's a lot of that going on <laughs> in that comic, and I and I thought it was at first I was a little miffed because of the last issue when she's on her way out to uh, set, you know, Jessica's on her way out to San Francisco, and now that she's arrived, I think she's arrived in the new one, I haven't read it yet, um, I was thinking, like, are they ever going to put her back in her costume? Are they purposely avoiding her not in her costume so they don't have to show her goods? And, uh, no, at the end of the comic, she's back in the costume, and woo! <laughs> her goods are out there and flapping in the wind, so, uh, uh, kudo, good, good job, that's, <laughs> that's what I wanted and and I got it in that comic so I, I'm I'm gonna wait and read it until I get the physical copy from my subscription and I'll, I'll read it and, like, and then I'll do my reviews online I know I, the other thing that's kind of weird is I've got uh, I usually do the She-Hulk and that one together but um, I, they double shift last month of Spider-Woman so you got that bridge one in between so I guess I got two Spider-Woman comics to review and then and then I'll do the She-Hulk um, and by the way, I did, uh, I did subscribe to uh, uh, the Captain Marvel. So because I was reading the Captain Marvel, just because I want to see if I liked it, and actually, kind of liked it. Um, so I don't really, I hate her outfit. I can't stand her her new outfit, and I don't like the way she's drawn. But um, I like parts of it. Uh, so I subscribed to that. Like I said, I like the lady. I like the, the female comic characters. Their their titles. Uh, which again seems to be counterintuitive to what you know all the the usual suspects keep crying online that you know nobody likes the women care I've loved the women characters since I was 12 years old uh, and I've liked them better than the male characters since I was 12 years old if you look at uh, Black Widow there for obvious reasons I mean as shallow and you know creepy as that is for me liking it if that's the if you know it's very superficial and very shallow on my part <laughs> I admit it, um, but regardless, that doesn't that doesn't stop the fact that that's why I like the comic, right? And I'm gonna say, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that need to fess up and need to come clean and uh, admit that that's also why they're into the comic. And if you say that you're not, I don't know what you're trying to do. I guess you're trying to save face or whatever. You know, I don't, I don't, I could give a rat's ass what people think of me, so I don't. Uh, I don't care, you know, that, you know, I'm giving you, telling you my opinion, giving you my proclivities are right up there on the table. So, you know, if you're not, you don't have the balls to fess up, then, you know what, quit complaining. Uh, you know, or maybe you don't, maybe, maybe you honestly don't like that stuff, and that's fine. I mean, there are people out there, obviously, that are, you know, not lunatics like myself. So, you know. But I think that there's a lot of people, and I'm not pointing any names, because. But I'm just saying I think there's a lot of people out there that go out of their way to to make it seem like they're not into that uh, when they're really into that. And uh, I just, I just, what are you trying to, what are you trying, who are you trying to impress? You know, you're trying to, you're trying to score points with the ladies. You're trying to score points with who? <laughs> you know, you're trying to not look like a. A, a creep like me, well, <laughs> kind of come off kind of creepy in another kind of way, but anyways, uh, so I just wanted to bring that up, because I, I was thinking about that as I was working today, and I thought to myself, um, speaking of the creep, geez, here it looks all greasy, I've got the, I've got the comic man, the comic book, uh, shop owner from Simpsons, uh, Ponytail, no, oh, Catherine Janeway, <laughs> sorry, um, I guess I'm playing the part pretty well, uh, even if I tried to or not, <laughs> maybe I'm not playing the part, maybe that I'm the real deal, but, um, anyways, uh, I just wanted to put that out there, uh, again, like I said, I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon of making videos here, but I, something, when something comes up, I think I want to throw it on in video and get out there, I will, um, and uh, again, I got some comic books I want to look through and read through and, and give my opinions on those coming up. Um, again, you know, I, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are digging my stuff, but if you do dig it and you want to subscribe, hit subscribe. Uh, 
you know, if you want to send me a comment, and, you know, say whatever. Send me a comment, say whatever. Uh, you know, you can, you can, you can send me a, send me a, a, a fifteen hundred word dissertation on why I'm a creep. That's what I'd like to hear. Yeah, that's my challenge to you. <laughs> is give me, a, give me a fifteen word, a fifteen hundred word, which is like a standard paper. Uh, you know, you know, uh, pontificating on how how much of a creep I am. I'd like to see that. I'd be enjoyable to read. Um, maybe it's maybe it's better than the comics. Hey, eh? what the heck? So, uh, if not, I will see, catch you on the next video. Whenever that may be, it may be tomorrow, maybe a week from now. Who knows? But uh, we'll figure that out when we come to it. All right, talk to you then. Bye bye.